And according to my grandma, she's been 88 for the past three years. <laughs> but now we all know she's finally got one month left until her birthday. And I just want to finish this for her while she's young. Obachime, kokoroka, dear grandma, from my heart. You were at the hospital when I was born. There must have been something about three generations being in one room that made history seem tangible. So easy to touch, so easy to hold. There had to have been something about my baby cries that murmured the future because every time I talk to you now, there's something about your whisper that just screams my ancestry. You see my grandmother's frail fingers casually carry 87 years of her life and her arthritis tells stories. Her index finger crooked and gracefully points me down memory lane to a time when I first saw her dance, first saw her hands painless, holding a traditional Japanese fan, moving crowds like wind, a five foot tsunami dressed in a kimono face paint and culture. How beautiful to be able to tell stories with no microphone, no literary devices, just a choreographed version for love for the stage and a connection to the people. It is a love that runs through my blood, free as a thousand paper cranes, free as a cherry blossom in the spring, free as a ring finger without those rings. See, I've come to believe that a wrinkle is worth more than a diamond could ever be because her three marriages have died, but her pride still grows in her follicles. That's why her hair waves like a Japanese flag on the side of a kamikaze jet knowing her life will crash on American soil the other night. She held me tight, cried, and said she was ready to die, but something inside told me she's not quite ready yet. What do I say? What could one possibly say about life to a person who has already seen the smirk on death's face? Her arthritis comes from his firm hand. Shake her knuckles are too weak to open a jar, but still strong enough to carry her sanity in her palm. See, for the last eight years that I've lived with her, I woke up to her prayers and fell asleep to her cooking. She would mend a rice ball like a broken heart and feed it to me in case I ever needed another one inside of my chest. I recently noticed her feet are deformed from dancing on top of decades. I used to think we took our shoes off to help keep the house clean, but it's really to respect the land she walks on and remind myself this is not a nursing home. My daily dialogue is her assisted living now. I know why she always wants to make me food because watching me grow helps her feel more alive. So you were at the hospital when I was born, so count on me to be there for you when you die, Obachang. You have choreographed my respect for elders, and as long as I'm breathing, I will be dancing behind your face paint. Yo, fuck when you're gone. I wanna remember you now. I wanna walk through your wrinkles, get drunk off the wine you sip out of hourglasses every night, and bend my future arthritically but beautifully so that my life will remind others of your ring finger. I asked my mother, What's the one thing she would say about hers? And she said, she has experienced war. She has experienced lots and lots of struggles, you know? But she never be defeated.